Hello everybody and welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 how-to video. Today we want to talk about cows. So just real quick, cows are probably one of the most involved and most costly animals to get into, but can also be very rewarding as far as regular income. So here we are on our test bed of Elm Creek and I went ahead and pre-placed all four. That's right, there are four in-game cow pastures. We have the open cow pasture, as we have seen with pretty much every other animal so far. We have the open cow pasture that requires water and food. Then we have the cow barn, which is the next step up. And then we move over to the large cow barn, which is a significantly bigger building. You're going to need a lot of space to put this one down. And then we have the final big placeable, which is the large cow barn with feeding robot. So this building, if you've got the money, because boy, it's expensive. But if you've got the money, you can basically feed the feeding robot and then the feeding robot is going to feed your animals for you which is pretty darn cool and we're going to demonstrate all of that in this video as we have done with all of our other animal videos let's go ahead and take a look at all of the cow placeables in the build mode shift p on pc to get into the build mode and we're going to go to animals and cows and let's venture on over here. So we have, first up, the exterior cow pasture. Holds 15 cows. Requires, as far as food, total mixed rations or hay or grass. And also requires water. Uh, this particular pasture area does not produce slurry or manure, but does provide milk. Let me move over to the cow barn. Is right here. So the cow barn, which holds 45 cows, does not require water because, once again, if we have a building, water is plumbed in, automatically provided. It takes total mixed rations, hay, or grass. It does have facility for slurry and milk. And if you wish to make use of manure, then you'll need to put down the manure silo extension which is gonna be found under buildings, silo extensions, this one right here. Now, I deliberately placed that silo extension way over here, a little bit of ways away, because I wanted to see basically if there was a proximity limit and if I could place it this far away or not. We move on to the next building, which is the large cow barn. It will hold 80 cows, requires total mixed rations, grass, and hay. Just like the normal cow barn, it does have facilities for slurry. And if we do want to make use of manure, well, you've got to put down the silo extension. So I'll put it down over here. I just wanted to see if we could have multiples and if it would address or register with the closest cow area. And then moving on up the food chain, we have the large cow barn with feeding robot. Now it also is going to accept up to 80 cows with the base game configuration, total mixed rations, hay and grass as far as food sources go. It does have provisions for slurry and milk output. And this one is gonna require the most land of all because it has the feeding robot shed that is attached to it. So, like I said, these things are absolutely massive. If you scroll out, you can see the kind of space that we're talking about here. If you use the tractor there as a frame of reference, to give you an idea of the area that we've got involved here where I do have these four area four buildings. If we take a look here at the PDA. This is field 56 that's across from the shop. I've basically flattened this area and repainted most of field 56. 
and I have basically used up pretty much most of that area other than this nice space here to maneuver around in with these four areas. And I did also add a third manure heap over here. Once again, just to kind of see how far away I could place it and everything. So what we're going to see now is let's talk about watering and feeding and providing straw to these areas. So I've got a trailer loaded with water over here. We're going to take it and provide water to our exterior pasture. And we'll just roll on up here. Start overloading the water. The water troughs are identifiable because they are two segmented, whereas the food troughs so far we have seen are three segmented. So if you, for whatever reason, don't have the interactive icons displaying, then you can always tell the difference based on how many segments there are. Water troughs are two segments, food troughs are three. Now you can feed bales at these animal areas. So I've got a couple of hay bales here. I think we'll just make use of one for demonstration purposes. Now, interesting enough, let's just cover this while we're over here. The feed robot requires loose material and loose material only. We cannot use a bale in the feeding robot as this building is provided from giants. I have no doubt that there will be modded variants of this shed that allow you to put bales in there and will take bales, but as provided, it will not accept bales. So to feed a bale, we're just gonna drop it here in front of the trough, extract the forks, and you'll see, there it goes away. And now the cows are, well, they're getting a little excited over there. They are a little bit excitable. Now, as far as straw goes, straw is an interesting beast. We've demonstrated with the horse buildings and we've demonstrated with the cow buildings. If you have seen those videos, that those buildings do accept straw bales. These do not, for whatever reason. The straw trigger, in fact, seems to be a little wonky with these pins. And it's kind of interesting. The easiest, quite frankly, the easiest way of providing straw for all of our cow areas is to use loose straw and dump it with a trailer or dump it with a feed mixer. I've got a feeling that maybe since the triggers are a little wonky, that's why these buildings are not taking bales because the other ones do. Getting it to accept straw through a straw blower itself is a bit of a struggle. And that's what we're about to demonstrate, but I wanted to open up all these doors first. And while we're here, let's talk about the actual cows themselves. I went a little bit off, off script, if you will. So the paw, that is where our triggers are gonna be for our cows. We have four different breeds of cows that we can buy for our animal areas. We have Brown Swiss, Holstein, Angus, and Limousine, Limousine, whatever, however, doesn't really matter to me. We can get them in newborn calves, year old or 18 month old variants. 
The newborn calves are the cheapest at $200, but they will not provide milk output, nor will they be able to reproduce until they are 18 months of age. The 12-month-old cows do provide milk, but they are not old enough to reproduce. So if you want to start out getting milk right away, you want to make sure you buy cows that are at least 12 months old. And then the 18-month-old variants of all of these breeds will reproduce starting immediately once their health is up, and they will be pumping out milk also on a regular basis. Now, as far as your milking cows, we have Brown Swiss and Holstein. Those are the cows that are going to provide you milk. Angus and Limousine are meat breeding cows, if you will. They are bred for meat. They will have a higher resale value, and they will not produce milk. So they are female cows. All of these cow models are female cows. Yes, they have udders. Yes, to some degree, when you think about a beef cow, you think of a male variant. But you know what? You need a man and you need a lady to make a baby. So these are all female cows. You can just imagine the milk is going toward the calves. The milk is not being sold for human consumption. And therefore, you are not getting milk in the area, on the cow area. Now let's take a look here while we're over here. We have the, the milk unloading point. If you do happen to have one of the milking breeds... You can identify that with this icon here. Really detailed areas. I wish some of this was interactive. Like, I wish you could come in here and it would tell you how much milk you have in here. Or even better, if it would allow you to set it to auto-sell or auto-distribute if you also happen to own the dairy or the bakery. That would be super fantastic. Now, let's run around here and demonstrate what I'm talking about with respect to the wonky straw trigger. So we've got our straw blower up. I'm going to go ahead and put up the F1 menu and we're going to drive through here and it just as I say we get the start overloading but if we get too close we should notice that go away. Yeah, see, now we're too close. So if you are too close to the feeding rail, you're not going to get the start overloading. Let's position ourselves a little further away from the feeding rail. And now we get the start overloading. So be very aware of the positioning of your, your straw blower with respect to these areas and in fact what's really interesting is you don't even need to go in the building you can do it out here or at least i was able to when i was demonstrating this or practicing this or testing whichever you want to say so the straw is a little wonky so if you're having difficulty getting the straw blower to um, recognize to unload, you may have to position it in some rather interesting places. Like here. Or like I said, I was getting it to recognize outside of here. There. I guess part of it depends on how your chute is angled. Your chute is angled mostly up. Now I can blow it from outside. If your chute's angled mostly down, then you can do it from inside. But you can get best results if you use a trailer, which we're going to demonstrate here in a moment. Blow the straw in. If you haven't seen the straw blower, that's how it works. Only the building will accept straw. The outside area does not accept straw.
You can find the straw blower in the shop under tools and then animals. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So if we go to tools, animals, and we'll scroll over to the Anderson Pro Chop 150. That is the straw blower that we are demonstrating here. In another video, we have already talked about mixing TMR, so we're not going to make use of TMR in this video. Or we're not going to demonstrate how to make TMR, I should say. You will need straw if you wish to have manure. If you don't want to use manure, well, then you don't have to add straw or you could put straw in and just not put down the manure heap and you won't get manure. So it's an interesting idea that Giants has implemented here where they have there we go. where they have implemented a system where you can use straw to maximize the health of your animals but you could also choose to not place the manure heap and therefore not have to deal with straw or with manure creation. So I kind of like that idea. I just do wish that they were a little bit more clear in the help text as to basically which manure heap to use because there are two and as I said before, you want to use the one under silo extensions. Manure heap extension is what you want to place. Do not place the manure silo as it will not spawn manure. As you can see, this is where we're going to be adding our straw for the large barn. And then the same will be done in the large barn with feeding robot. Now that we have supplied straw in all of our areas, let's go ahead and take a look at those. So you see our cow pasture, we have 15 brown Swiss. See they have 8,000 liters of hay. We have then 15 Holstein cows in our cow barn. They have been satisfied with straw. We have 15 Angus in our large cow barn. You can see they take 38,000 liters of straw. That is because even though we have the same number of animals, we are talking about a different size building and the different size buildings have different minimum fill levels. And then we have 38,000 also in the large cow barn with feeding robot where we have our limousine cows. Now let's talk about the feeding robot and getting this up and running. So you can see here we have four fill types that are needed for the feeding robot. Basically the same four fill types that are needed for TMR. We have hay, straw, silage, which is composed of the biggest area here. And then around the side, we have our mineral food, our concentrate. So basically getting the feeding robot set up is pretty straightforward. All we need to do is dump loose material in the appropriate areas. So straw and straw, hay and hay, and silage in silage. What we'll see is we'll see the heap start to grow here. Come up out of the ground. Now the feeding robot takes a large amount of product. Okay, you see we just dumped 18,000 liters in here and we get this little mound. So you're gonna be able to put a whole lot of product in here. This is gonna be designed for the, the dairy farmer with a big operation. I'm a little surprised that this area only takes 80 cows. Seems like maybe a little bit of a small quantity. I get it that, you know, given the enclosed area that we're talking about here, you're not going to have 
hundreds upon hundreds of cattle, but I think at the economy of scale, the feeding robot would probably be most effective somewhere where you had a large amount of cows really to pay for this size of an investment because this building is expensive. I don't think I called it out when we were talking about the areas, but look at this. 75,000 for the 15 cow pasture over here. To a quarter of a million dollars for the regular cow barn that holds 45 cows. Half a million dollars for the large cow barn and then nearly another quarter of a million dollars for nearly th three quarters of a million dollars for the large cow barn. That is right there. So three quarters of a million for this investment. I think you're going to have a lot more than 80 cows. But either rate, it's for a farmer that really just doesn't want to be mess bothered with actually feeding their cows. So if that's you, then this might be the building you want to look at. Now for mineral food, you can buy pallets obviously from the shop. We talked about that in the TMR video. If you didn't see that video, you're going to go to objects, pallets, scroll over here. You have yourselves mineral feed. And that's going to give you a 1,050 liter pallet of mineral feed. All you need to do is put the pallet right in front of that icon and then you will see the building basically unload into the, the Una silo there. Now I have gone and placed this Una silo right here and put a trailer load of mineral feed in it because I wanted to demonstrate the use of that. And this trailer or this silo is gonna be available from the containers area of the build mode. So if we go to shift P once again, and we go to containers under buildings, it is this silo right here holds 27,300 liters worth of product and it can hold mineral feed and seed. So we're gonna hit start filling. We're gonna pick, we want to fill mineral feed and now we're getting bulk mineral feed into our trailer. Just like so. Adding mineral feed is as simple as just backing up to it. And you'll get the unload command to overload into the silo. Just like that. So let's go ahead and put mineral feed over here for our feeding robot. And I have gone ahead and put some more load of silage, straw, and hay over there. As you can see. So we filled those heaps up a fair bit. And the feeding robot is going to operate every hour on the hour. And I'm going to demonstrate that here in a little bit. Now let me go ahead and get these other cows fed with total mixed rations. And as we have seen in the pig video, as I have talked about it in the horse video, this video is being produced with version 1.1.1.0 of the game. It appears that any animal area that requires multiple food inputs is set up in such a way that we need to be cautious of the types of food we are feeding. If we are feeding only total mixed rations, that is, look at those excitable cows. Oh my gosh. If we're feeding only total mixed rations, then that is the easiest thing to do because we're only putting one food source in the area and we could fill the trough up 100%. Now, if we have happened to have 
fed two different food sources or three because again our cows will take grass hay and total mixed rations maybe we have put grass in initially because that's what we had then later we've had the ability to make hay so we want to add hay and then later we have the ability to add silage or not silage but total mixed rations so we add total mixed rations but what you're going to find is and as we have demonstrated in the cow or the, the pig and the horse video is this the total is the flat out total that is the absolute maximum food of any of the three sources and all of the three sources that can go into the area. So since we put 8,000 liters of hay in, we can only put 3,200 liters of total mixed rations in because our total food trough has a capacity of 11,250 for our 15 cows. You can see down here the effectiveness is 100% for total mixed rations. It is the best food to give. Then hay is 80% effective and grass is 40% effective. So let's say you bought your cows and you didn't have the ability to make hay yet. So you just went, cut some grass real fast. You collected it and brought it over here and filled the trough up with grass. Your cows are going to be 40% effective. They're going to have 40% productivity. They're going to have reduced health as a result. They may not even start to reproduce until you get them a better food source. Well, you won't be able to give them hay until they have consumed down some portion of that grass. Then you'll be able to put hay in the trough, but only hay to the point that you fill the total bar all the way full. So what you really need to do is have them kind of consume down the grass and hope they consume the grass down at a rate faster than they're consuming the hay that you're putting it in. That way you can keep their health up, their productivity up, and get reproduction going and get milk production going at a really good clip. And then later you decide you're now able to feed total mixed rations. You're going to have to let that hay get fed down so you can start putting TMR in. And then once you put the TMR in, they're going to start wanting to eat the TMR more than the hay and more than the grass, possibly. And that's what we're going to check here in a little bit. So be very cautious of how you are feeding your animals. I don't think it's working the way intended. Other people have already put comments on the pig video and the horse video. They think that it's, it's fine the way it is. For the average player, I'm concerned because I don't think it's overly helpful and overly intuitive as to what's going on. So I think that's going to cause a lot more frustration and confusion than it's worth, in my opinion. Now that we have filled the three barns that are not involved with the feeding robot full of food, we take a look, we've got a maximum of our animal pasture with 15 cows, 11,250 food. The cow barn with 15 cows has a max capacity of 33,750 liters. Of course, if we put more cows in, that value may go up. That possibly is the minimum fill level for this building. The large cow barn has a 60,000 liter minimum fill level. And then we still have to feed our limousine cows here in the feeding robot barn. And to do that, we're going to let the robot do it. So let's kick up the clock and speed things up and watch this feeding robot in action. So at the top of the hour, the, there's going to be a curtain that's going to drop down here. And then it's going to basically block off the access to the robot. The robot is going to start its efforts by getting the silage. So I'm going to take a scoop of silage, dump it in the mixer. It is going to also apply the appropriate amount of mineral food. 
Now it is going to go and get a heap of straw. And once again, put into the mixer. And then lastly, it's going to come over here on its gantry and get a scoop of hay. That's going to take it all back over here, put it in the mixer. And once that's done, here comes the robot. Robot's going to come out and make his way around this gravel path. Find his way inside of here. And then he is going to basically run the length of the barn. Turn himself around and then start putting mixed rations here along the rail. Now, something else that we've noticed with respect to the cow, well, all of the animal areas, I should say, in FS22 is they don't appear to be leaving dirt. Animal dirt. And... Farm Sim 19, we had to come through, and Farm Sim 17, we had to come through and clean the animal areas of dropped food. But we haven't sent, been able to or needed to do that with respect to FS 22. So he's going to do that. It is going to see if I can jump up here. It is going to empty itself, as you can see there. And then once it is empty, he is going to basically carry on and go back to his little, uh, little storage area. And now these guys have a little bit of food. 1,300 liters of food, to be exact. You might say to yourself, well, that's not a lot. Well, the thing is, this guy's going to run on the hour, every hour, nonstop. So he's even going to run overnight. So we're going to go and sleep. It's 10 a.m. We're going to go ahead and sleep till morning, and we'll see how much food we have in the large cow barn with Robot. Good morning, everybody. It is a bright, cheery morning here on Elm Creek, and our feeding robot has been busy overnight. We have nearly 30,000 liters worth of TMR now in the food trough. We have consumed down our straw a little bit. You'll see we have no milk in our limousine. They are 13 months of age. They are not going to reproduce because they are not old enough. Only 18-month-old cows will reproduce. Our Angus cows are 19 months old now, and they are 10% into their reproductive cycle. So they are reproducing. They also have provided us zero milk, and we do have some slurry. A little bit of straw has been consumed down. Food has been consumed down. Holstein cows are a different story. They are 13 months old. Again, they are less than 18 months, so they will not be reproducing yet. But we do have a wee bit of milk. They have also Produced a wee bit of slurry, consumed down our food and our straw a bit. The brown Swiss, they have no milk because they are newborns. They are now one month old. They will not produce milk until they are older. And they will also not reproduce until they are 18 months of age. Oh, look here. Here comes our feeding robot on cue because it is the top of the hour. And like I said, he will just continue to feed every hour on the hour until, well, until he's out of product, pretty much. Let's go over here and take a look and see how our heaps are going. 
So if you have this building, all you really need to do is just keep an eye on your heaps and top them off as needed to make sure that the robot does his little thing. And you can just keep going about your day. So let's go back here. You can see that as far as our brown Swiss go, they have consumed down the hay. So we could come in with our trailer now and we could put more total mixed rations in there to get their productivity up and keep their productivity up. Now let's go and take a look at our manure heaps. Let's do that. So all of our buildings have 15 cows in them. So we've got 3,071 liters in this manure heap. We have 2,062 liters in this manure heap. Interesting enough, a thousand liter difference. And in our large cow barn, we have 4,312 liters of manure. So that is quite a difference. 2,000, just over 2,000 liters, just over 3,000 liters, and over 4,300 liters. All with 15 cows. All were full of straw. All were full of feed, basically. Or were constantly getting feed, so they didn't aptly run out. But they all have different amounts of manure. So it's possible the limousine... Or, sorry, it's possible the... Angus produce more manure than the other breeds. I don't know how to account for that variance with respect to the um, the quantities there, but it is interesting that we have three different amounts of manure for the same number of cows. Possibly, I don't know, possibly we would need to test and see if we put the exact same breed in three different pins of different sizes if we would get more manure are we going to get more manure out of a large building than a small building and if that's the case then why did the feeding robot building give us a different amount than the large building it's hard to say at any rate you're going to come over here and this is where you're going to draw your milk out and at this point you could if you owned the bakery or the dairy you could take your milk to either of those productions to get started with cheese or if you also had sugar then you could get started with chocolate production from the dairy if you had the bakery then you could also make cakes by taking it there and then if you had a slurry tanker you would come over here to this area on the three buildings to draw out your slurry so I think that pretty much addresses the cows that are in base game farming simulator 22. One last thing I do want to touch on is value. You can see that our Angus cows that are the oldest are the most valuable at $2,400 a piece. Our limousine cows at 13 month old, which are also for beef production, are $1,730 a piece. Our Holstein cows, which are also 13 months of age, are only $881 worth of value. They don't have a lot of value because their value is in their milk, whereas the beef cows and Angus and limousine, their value is in their meat, and therefore the older they are, the more valuable they are. And then our brown Swiss, our little babies, one month old, they have no real value at all because, well, their newborns. What is the ideal age to sell your cows? Only time will tell. You'll have to see if there is any point in time where the value kind of stops increasing. Will the cows require more food as they age? Probably. But again, only time will tell. This video is more served as a primer to cows to get you started as opposed to a 100% thorough, complete 
coverage of cows from all angles, including their life cycle. So until next time, guys, happy farming. <laughs>